Hi, everybody, and thanks for joining us, particularly the students that are doing the KSA Kitchen Design Project this year. Um, we're very, very grateful to have a, quite a talented bunch of gentlemen here who have a lot of experience in the surfacing and fabrication industry who are going to just help us discuss kitchen surfacing, what the options are, what the pros and cons are. Um, and we're very lucky to be able to take time out of their busy schedules to, to have this discussion. Uh, we have with us today Jason Wells from PG Bison, who's going to be covering laminate surfacing. Uh, Brent Owen from Sangingalo Marble and Granite, and his focus today is going to be Granite and Marble. Garth Prost from ProStone, uh, he's going to be speaking mainly about quartz surfacing. And uh, Stefan Lawrence from Granite Projects, and uh, his uh, subject today is Sintered Surfacing. And last but not least, uh, Andrew Hatt from Infinite Surfacing, and they specialize in solid surfacing. So guys, thank you very, very much for your time. I really appreciate it. And, and let's get going talking about surfacing. Firstly, um, you know, let's look at what the options are available to consumers nowadays. What can they look at to, to put on their, their kitchen surfaces? Uh, Jason, maybe you want to get started and just tell us a little bit about what laminate surfacing is. Okay, so, so laminate works, I think, is it's almost the, 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 the basic um, sort of entry level into, into worktop surfacing. A laminate is a high pressure laminate. It's made up of layers of paper. So we take um, super saturating paper, we impregnate it with resin, bond that together, and then that is bonded onto a particle board substrate, and there's a melamine backer to balance that. And that's really the construction of the top. Perfect, thank you. And then if we move to marble and granite, I think most people know what marble and granite is, but if you want to tell us a little bit about the actual material, Brent. Yeah, hi, thanks, Jeff. Um, Granite is basically an igneous rock which has been formed um, through slow crystallization of magma under the surface, um, which comprises mainly of quartz. Um, marble, uh, just to get an understanding of marble, marble, we need to understand limestone. So limestone is sedimentary rock, um, composed mainly of calcium carbonate, which is um, uh, mineral calcite. Um, over years and years and years through um, metamorphosis, it actually turns into a limestone through heat and pressure. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much um, marble. Yeah, we can see the little picture on the side of the slide there where they've actually got that huge big uh, granite mine on going on the side. Yeah. Um, Garth, quartz surfacing, how does that differ? Hi, oh, Stephanie, oh, thank you. Um, quartz is, is basically an engineered stone. Um, it's commonly known as a quartz surface, but uh, it's in fact an engineered stone. Um, 93 to 95% of the stone is natural material, which is a, um, a, a common um, found mineral around the world. Um, it's, it goes through a process of, of crushing and sorting to a size, depending on the, uh, the finish they want on the, on the material. Um, then it gets mixed with a resin, three, three to se uh, 5 to 7% resin. Um, it goes through a, a vibration and compression and heating process where they've got these massive machines that, um, that compress the, the mixture. Um, at the same time, they vibrate it. They put suction onto it to suck all the air out of it and, um, and then, and then uh, bind it together with the, with the resin um, under heat. Um, this, this forms a slab and then the slab comes, comes out of that machine gets ground down to, to thickness um, and polished in the same way as the natural granite or marble gets polished. Um, I would say quartz is probably the most common surface for kitchen countertops at the moment. And um, there's hundreds, hundreds of, of factories around the world producing quartz. Thanks, Garth. Um, Stefan, do you want to tell us a little bit about what, what a sintered surfacing is? Well, thank you, Stephanie. Okay, so Sinton surfacing is, is basically where um, you go with these natural materials in power, in powerful net, and it's, it's processed under severe heat and pressure or both. Um, so if you combine water to the, the mineral powders, it becomes a compact, right? Okay, so um, the pressure that it goes under is from 6,000 to 15,000 PSI pounds per square inch is exerted to the material. Um, the, on the sentence surface in the, um, where was it now, sorry. Um, yeah, so during, during the process, 
um, the minerals, the, the materials are fused to one another to make them one. During the firing process is where um, the, the product becomes hard. And yeah, that's basically essential porcelain, essential surfacing. Thank you, and yeah, it, it it is linked to porcelain, so a lot of, a lot of people will 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 be able to draw that tile to, that uh, link to to the the idea idea of a big porcelain tile. Uh, Andrew and uh, solid surfacing, which is the the one that can be shaped and molded. Thanks, Stephanie. Yeah, um, yeah, it is obviously one of the more unique uh, benefits of the material. Um, the the sheet is a man-made material, um, and the, the easiest to describe has got acrylics um, and resins and, um, and polymers and pigments. The pigments give it the, the different colors. So there are over 150 different colors of the sheet that, uh, that you can choose from. Um, the material uh, ranges from six mil thick to 12 mil thick up to 20 mil thick uh, upon order. And the size is 3.6 uh, meters by 760 wide. And you do get a 930 wide sheet, but only in white, the color white. So all other colors, um, you get your speckles, your solid colors, and now we've got the movement to depict a, 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 um, a marble effect, but we just call, call it the movement range. It's still, all of those are man-made um, and the acrylics give it the bendability, as you mentioned. So the uniqueness about the material is that uh, it can be heated at 160 degrees and we can get up to a 50 mil radius so we will create a jig and we will bend that material onto that timber jig and 15, uh, or five to 15 minutes, depending on the weather, it'll regain its solid state uh, to give you the shape of the material. Um, obviously the seamlessness that can be joined, it's, it's uh, in, un, under correction, but the only material that can be joined seamlessly, the adhesive that comes with the sheet, it matches the color of the sheet and through a fabrication process, which we'll get into later, we can eliminate the join, which um, is, is another benefit. Thanks. Thanks Andrew. So as Andrew said, we need to now look at the fabrication. So how is it actually turned into a, a work surface? Um, Jason, I think yeah, yours is, is, a, is a, a fairly easy one. It is, it is. So basically the way that the top is manufactured, there is no fabrication necessary. It comes in sort of two standard sizes. You know, you've got a 600 wide top and you've got a 900 wide top and the top is the top. So all it comes down to is really an installation. And then for that cutting and making cutouts for sinks and things like that, it's all done with your typical woodworking tools. So there's nothing special required. In fact, it could actually be done as a DIY job. That's the, the you know, you can pick up a top in um, one of the, the, the trade chains or a, re a, a stockist and take it home and, and install it yourself. Um, so yeah, that's all I can tell you about the, the, the installation. <laughs> Not nice and easy one. Um, obviously, Brent Marble and Granite are a little bit more complicated. It can't be undertaken by your average Joe. Yeah, um, so let me just take one step back um, to get before the slabs get to us where the product comes from. Um, a block of granite gets cut from a mountain. So the block is like a um, loaf of bread. And that gets cut in slices, which we'll call slabs. Um, that gets done the quarry and then gets delivered to a company like ours. So we get given a raw slab of granite that's polished on the upper surface. Uh, we'll take a template on site of what the client requires. The templates come back to the factory. We then cut um, the marble or granite according to template on a bridge saw, which is cut with a diamond blade and water for cooling. Um, the edges that require polish go through a polishing machine, a line polisher. Um, or polished by hand, depending on the fabricator. Um, yeah, then goes through a bit of a QC process and waits on the frame, and then off to site, um, where we hopefully have minimal cutting on sites to avoid dust. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Super, thanks. Um, and then, yeah, I think quartz and sintered surfacing are fairly similar in their fabrication process. To, uh, to, to marble and granite. Garth, for, for, from the court side, is that correct? Yeah, from the court side, um, uh, the, the, the fabricating and installation of the quartz countertops is very similar to natural stone, granite and marble. Um, it's probably a, a, a quite a bit easier though because the material is more forgiving. Um, because of the resin content in a, in a quartz slab, 
the, the slab is slightly flexible and it is a lot more forgiving than a, a, a natural stone or even a sintered stone. A sintered stone is, is, is a lot less forgiving and, uh, and tends to, to break a lot easier if it's um, forcefully manipulated. Um, the quartz countertops also um, get joined together with a, with a matching color epoxy um, and, and yeah, a very similar process to, to granite and marble. Thanks, Garth. Uh, Stefan, um, I know that uh, we, we're speaking sintered surfacing, also similar process, but it actually, as Garth said, is a little bit more tricky to fabricate um, and also requires a, um, the support of a substrate when, you, when you're installing. Um, what are the sort of the tricks of the trade or the difficult points, the more difficult points of fabrication of sintered surfacing? Uh, definitely moving it around if you need to be experienced with it. Um, it's, you have to be very careful when you're moving it around onto your table and all of that sort of thing. Um, your blade also, the speed of the blade, it's a specific blade. And then the speed of the blade is, is at a specific speed to allow you to cut the, the centricles, you know, for the centric surfaces. Um, and when installation-wise, obviously, you do need a substrate for, for most centric surfaces, you know. Yeah, I mean, I know when the sintered surfacing first came to South Africa, we, we we saw a lot of the fabricators battling as they were learning to to use the product right. and also right. retool themselves to to make sure that they had the right um, um, yeah, materials, uh, uh, right tools to actually cut the material. Uh, Andrew, what what's special or unique about the way you fabricate solid surfacing? Uh, thanks, Stephanie. So, um, yeah, it's it's quite a process, um, just especially because we want to el eliminate the join. That's the, the uh, one of our main benefits. So, the, the the fabrication is 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 hugely important, and um, uh, we are network fabricators of the material, and it's quite important to get the right uh, the a fabricator of solid servicing to do that to eliminate the joins. Um, as I said, the material is three point six by seven sixty, but we can make any size sheet. And we do that in our factory. We, we want to fabricate as much as possible. So uh, we're strict on process. Um, and like Brent mentioned, I think you mentioned about uh, templating. It's very similar to stone and marble. We do a very basic uh, template on site to get exactly the right angles and the walls that are slightly out uh, um, and on site. And that we bring back to the factory and um, we, we cut uh, according to the template and prep as much as possible in our factory. That's, that is, our, you know, that is our, our safe space and that's where all our tools are and that's where we, we get things done the most, most efficiently and, and with as little error. Um, so, so we try and we just harp on getting as much on, 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 uh, on, in our factory to do to get to site. Uh, machinery is very big for us at Infinite. Uh, we cut everything on, on CNC machine, but when taking a template is difficult. Uh, we can't get that template from site onto our CNC program. Uh, for you that don't know, it's just a router driven um, machine that cuts for us. So we try and we try and cut as much as possible in our fabrication process on a CNC. Um, and then from that, it then, you know, uh, I don't know if this is the right, time to mention now, but obviously there's a process labor-wise with regards to polishing the material, but I think we'll get onto that later. Thanks, Andrew. So obviously every product has its pros and cons, and um, you, you'll all want to defend your pros and not mention your cons, but we have to cover both. Um, so Jason, let's just look at what are the pros and cons when it comes to laminates. Okay, so laminate gives you quite a durable surface. It's got uh, wear, scuff, and impact resistance. It's non-porous, the, the way that the laminate is made, the resin flows and seals the entire surface up. So it's stain and moisture resistant from the, the point of the laminate. Um, we'll talk a little bit about the installation and where, where the, there's a weakness that has to be taken care of. Low maintenance. So once it's installed, it's done. There is no more sealing, resealing, varnishing, no cleaning with uh, Cobra polish, none of that. It's actually a, a very, very low maintenance um, work surface totally uh, sustainable from, from a point of view is it's renewable materials. The, the laminate is made from paper from FSC forests, the substrate, the, the core of the, the, the top, um, also out of um, sort of forest uh, managed with FSC, Forest Stewardship Council. So all sustainable materials going into it. Like I said, easy to clean, hygienic, the non-porous means you know, you wipe away the, the, any dirt so, so no germs and things are going to start getting inside of, of any little holes on the surface. Um, and then the other great benefit is that 
the paper, the laminate itself, the, the decorative surface, it's printed. So it means that it can change with the fashions. We're not stuck with one color forever or, or one pattern. If wood grain is in fashion, we can move to wood grain. If it's a stone we're looking for, we can find a stone print. If we want a geometric pattern, we can do that too. So that's the, the real benefit of a laminate is that you have quite a, a fashionable surface that can move with the time. Cons, uh, it often gets a bad reputation, but it comes down to bad installation. Uh, one of the key things in installing a worktop is to seal the exposed edges. The laminate does a great job of protecting it against moisture, but the chipboard core, the, 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 the sandwich in the middle, the, 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 the middle of the, the, this, this um, composite top, is actually, a, it, it's susceptible to moisture. So when you make a cutout for a sink, uh, even just installing it against the wall, the recommendation is that it should be coated with at least two coats of marine varnish. Um, and that gives it its best chance of, of being sustainable for, for a longer uh, period of time. If you don't do that, um, you know, sometimes people think it's just good enough to put a, a silicone or an acrylic bead down the wall and that'll stop it. But eventually those beads, that, that, that little silicone or acrylic peels away and the moisture gets in there too. And that's where you, you find damage coming in um, as water is able to seep in there and, and, and swell the top. Uh, yep, I've spoken about, um, it, it, it had a perception and, and that came down to the fact that for a long time, there were very boring colors that were in the range. It, it, it was trying to mimic stones like black granites and things like that. So you ended up with a very, very tired looking range. There's been a lot more work done in terms of, of bringing in newer colors and newer designs into, the, into this world. So the tops certainly are, are becoming a bit more popular. Also, it's moved away from the old what we used to call a delta bull nose post form, where it was a very simple sort of 16 millimeter radius. And now it has a much tighter radius. So it means we, we bend it around three millimeters on the top and the bottom edge. So you've got a nice sort of square profile. Uh, you're limited in the style of finished edges. Yes, it comes pre, that is a post formed edge. You can't do anything more to it. The, 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 and it's only edged on the 600 top. It's a one long edge. So just the front facing edge is done. And on a 900 top, both edges, the, the back and the front, are, are post-formed, but your, your ends are exposed, so they have to be sealed up with a, a laminate strip, and that's really the, the, the one limitation is, and you, you, uh, you're going to have to butt joint or, or sort of do a, um, you know, using a, 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 a T-joiner or things like that, so it really works in L shapes, but you're not going to get curvy shapes out of a, out of a laminate work. Thanks, Jason. Um, so Brent, we've um, divvied up uh, granite and marble here. Let's first look at, at granite. Yeah, so on granite, it's seven on the Mohs scale, which puts it, um, it's quite hard. Um, it can take impact, it's scratch resistant, uh, it can take handle high temperatures, um, although we do recommend putting trivets on. Take a hot pan out and you put it on there, it can do damage. Um, it's quite low porosity, although you do get more porous materials. Um, sustainability, um, it lasts forever, um, or almost forever, or they say lifetime is 25 years. Um, so yeah, once it's in, it's in. Um, and, uh, when we do get rid of any off cuts or anything, we do crush it and try and use it, um, for, um, decorative stone, etc. We don't put it in landstone, uh, in, um, landfill. Um, Availability, there are thousands and thousands of colors. Um, nature does wonders. So we, we really have some beautiful product, which is nice. Every, every slab is unique. Um, every client will have their own slab and there won't be one alike. Um, in terms of the cons, um, yeah, like I said, it, it can do high temperatures, but heat shock is a reality. Close to fireplaces, it will crack um, if you have high heat. Um, it needs maintenance, uh, yeah, it needs to be sealed every six months or so to prevent porosity, which oil can and will stay in granite. Um, yeah, and then like I said, while being a natural product, it is a limited resource. So marble's not dissimilar, but it, it has some things that make it not the most suitable for a kitchen application, correct? That is 100% correct. Um, unfortunately, it is being specified a lot in kitchens nowadays. Um, it's softer on the most scale, it's a three to four. Um, one of the positive is that because it's soft, there is a tendency to go towards your matte finishes. Because it's matte, uh, because it's soft, you can do acid wash finish, 
or a holy spinach, which is really easy to to be a matte finish and it's not a high labor contact, um, which does hide scratches. So if you have a scratch in the upper surface, it's easier to get rid of it when it's on a matte finish. To try to get it back to polish is a huge headache. Um, positive as well on, on marble is it's, it's warm. It's such a, a cold to touch, but it's such a warm feel. Um, it just creates such a nice homely effect in the home when you have it in the kitchen. Um, on a con, it is a lot more porous, 2% uh, porosity, which is quite high. Um, but if you spend the money and you get a good sealant, uh, it, it really does add life uh, to your marble. Seal it every six months or even every three months if you have to, if you have a porous material. Um, yeah, like I said, they're softer than granite, more prone to damage, can chip and crack easier. Um, but yeah, we all love marble and we, we love to hate it. <laughs> Um, yeah. Now moving on to goth, I mean, quartz surfacing, Brent's saying that everybody loves marble, but you've, with it being soft, we've seen a lot of quartz surfacing bringing in the marble look, but in the harder quartz product. Um, but there are a few differences in the pros and cons with quartz to marble and granite. Do you want to take us through yes. those? Steph, the quartz surface is a very, very durable product. Um, because it's made with a natural stone and, and the quartz is um, if you take a, a piece of granite, um, the quartz is the hard part of the granite. So the substance in, in that, that they use to make the quartz slab is 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 a very very hard uh, rock um, compared to 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 some semi precious stones or, or even precious stones. Um, the it can handle high temperatures, um, probably not as high as, as as a piece of natural stone, but it um, for the for general kitchen use. Um, it can handle any temperature, um, and as Brent said, you know it's always advisable to put a trivet or, a, or, or um, next to the next to the oven, uh, taking a hot pot off. You, you never know; it could it could damage it. Um, the quartz surface has got a small percent of reg resin in it, and the resin is susceptible to the heat. Um, the the most probably the most um, positive um, attribute to to a, a quartz surface is that it's non-porous. Um, there's very, very little um, substances that, or, or, or products in, that, that, that will stain a quartz surface. Um, so so that's, that's, a, that's a real plus for the quartz, quartz products. Um, as, you know, most, most of the, the quartz is made of the natural material, so you know, it is sustainable, um, it's, it's abundant all over the world. Um, and, and, it's, and it can be reused. Um, and and uh, I know some of the bigger manufacturers are, are re, um, uh, recycling the slabs and making, uh, making slabs out of them. Um, when it comes to availability, um, that's also a, a great plus for a quartz surface. Um, they're, they're able to manipulate the color of the, of the slab to make kind of any slab that they want. Um, and as Brent said, the, you know, the popular colors or the marvelous colors and the quartz manufacturers are, are, are copying a natural look marble to try and make it um, look like a marble, but um, but but, but uh, you know it, it operates with um, with more advantages than a than a natural piece of marble. Um, there's also very low maintenance on on a quartz surface, um, and a normal you know hot water and soap can clean any surface. Um, you know abrasive things like curry powders and that will not stain a, a, a quartz top. Um, it's quite easily washed off with the with the, just a normal household um, uh, soap and water. Um, when it comes to the cons of a of a court surface, um, heat, you know, heat, extreme heat is a problem, um, but nothing that you'll find in a in 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 a, a residential a kitchen. Um, also, uh, yeah, when it comes to um, uh, uh, chips, scratches, and 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 um, and cracks, uh, quartz surface, um, because of the resin content in in the material, um, it, it forms a slightly weak point in the in the surface. Um, also, again, it's uh, recommended to use a, a cutting board or a a, um, a trivet uh, next to the the, the hob. Um, when you when you're cutting on the surface. Thanks, Garth. 
Um, Stefan, yeah. and the, the, again, since it's surfacing, not dissimilar in its pros and cons. Uh, I know one of the big pros that everybody likes is that it's available in such a thin slab, a thin application. Uh, anything that particularly stands out as a difference in a pros and cons for sintered surfacing? Well, definitely on the sintered surfacing is the high um, temperatures it can take. Um, it can take up to 400 to 450 degrees Celsius. So for your fireplaces and that sort of areas, it's very, very commonly used. Um, it's a 100% natural product, so it's also sustainable, very hard and very durable if installed correctly, which I think is the most important part of it. And yeah, like you said, it does come in a center, center finish, which seems to be the modern way. Um, so yeah, that makes it appealing to consumers at the moment, yeah. Um, on the cons of it, it needs to be installed with a, with a substrate, definitely. And everything needs to be square, level, your, your cupboards. It's a bit more work for the, the carpenters to make sure it's, it's all level and square so that we can install the, the sintered surfacing on top of that. Um, the, the edge profiles you are limited to because of the, the thin profile. So you can't have very, very square and sharp edges. Um, yeah, that would probably be the only, the only concern. Thanks so much, Stefan. And then Andrew, yeah, what, tell us a little bit about the good and bad things of solid servicing. Andrew, you're on mute. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, as I said, the good first. Um, I think, yeah, I mean, the materials is one of the, the as it says here in the top, hard and durable, um, often used in commercial settings. So, yeah, I mean, you know, 20, it was 20% of our work was residential, 80% uh, more commercial res reception desks, um, um, you know, your wall cladding and this and that. But uh, in these times now, it's, it's, it's really changed on its head where 60% of our work is residential and um, the material is suitable for it. Um, uh, the, the, what can happen to the material, and it's part of a, a, a I suppose the pro is it's hard and durable, but the con is that uh, the material can be damaged. Uh, at the end of the day, it, it can, uh, if you put a hot pot on, or, or a pot on the side of the material, it can crack. So, but the con, of, sorry, the pro of that is, is that it can be fully repairable and repolishable, the material. Um, what we do for, say, Mrs. Jones's kitchen, we'll give them a cutting board uh, as a gift, but it's also uh, um, a, a the material offcut that is the same batch color as what you've installed the kitchen countertop. And if there is damage to the countertop, we'll take a piece of material uh, from that cutting board and we will route out uh, the crack, we'll, we'll wedge it and we'll polish it out um, and it'll be seamless. So again, uh, the pros of the material, it is a seamless material that um, can be joined together. Uh, I mentioned earlier, we'll do as much as we can on uh, offsite and when we get to site, for example, your l shape. A kitchen we will uh, join seamlessly so you will not have any join line you will not have to fill that join with uh, silicon that uh, over time can discolor and cause uh, grit and grime so i think with that is also you know the material is very hygienic um, we do a lot of hospital work um, we've also for the residential market we've got uh, and it goes hand in hand with another pro of um, material where it can be molded into shapes and uh, when we heat the material, as mentioned earlier, at 160 degrees in our oven, it comes out um, as a different state. You can tie a knot in the material. And uh, so we can create a lot of bespoke items. Uh, we can create furniture pieces. We can create uh, curved um, floating uh, shelves or countertop that's flat that curves down to the ground, for example. Um, but and that's, that's because of the acrylics that are in the material. Um, and yeah, with that is also available many colors. There are over 150 colors, as I was mentioning earlier, and um, like some of the other surfaces, we only had a, a solid or a speckle in the past, and now we've, you know, everyone's trying to, trying to look like a marble look, and as uh, you know, Brent was mentioning, it's that warm feeling of your kitchen. And uh, you know, our, our, um, uh, the distributors of the material and inventors of the material, they've also come up with a movement uh, range which depicts uh, those, those marble lookalikes. So I can have a seamless shaped marble effect. Um, we've also got a whole basin range that we've created that can be integrated uh, seamlessly into the kitchen countertop or a vanity 
for example, let's not forget uh, bathrooms. Um, it's, as I say, it's hygienic. Um, and uh, small, obviously, the, it says small marks and scratches can be repaired. Um, I've mentioned that. The um, cons, yes. Um, excessive heat, it doesn't, uh, it, it, you can't put a hot pot directly onto the material. It can discolor and it can crack the material in, uh, if it's uh, severe. Obviously, we can repair it. Um, worst case scenario, so you never have to replace a countertop. Um, I've, 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 some people are very close to their kitchens and they love their kitchen, they move home, they want the exact same uh, design, which is funny, but I've had this quite a few times and we've literally taken the kitchen from the old house and uh, reinstalled it into the new house and rejoined it. Um, so that can be done. Um, but uh, the scratches as well, yeah, it scratches, uh, the, the darker colors scratch a lot. Um, the lighter colors scratch, but the, the molecules of material are white, so you can't see it as, as severe. Um, as I mentioned, we can repolish over time, so we can come back to the kitchen and, and or the reception desk and repolish it um, for a small amount. Um, yeah, that's it for now. Okay, so thanks, Andrea. Let's look at the cost, because obviously, that you know, when you're budgeting for a kitchen, you need to to consider how much you can afford and what to allocate to surfacing. Um, we've tried to sort of give a little indication here um, of where things sit. Obviously the laminate surfacing being the most cost effective and then there's this conception that the marble and granite tends to sit, sit there second in the running um, cheaper than quartz and sintered surface and solid surfacing but Brent, that's not always true there are granites and marbles that are rare and quite costly to use as surfacing is that correct yeah that's 100 percent step um i think it's like jewelry um, you can get something bottom of the range out of one, you can get expensive in another range. Um, so you can get cheap marbles, there's so much of it. You can get very rare marbles that are 10 times more expensive than your scented surfacing. Um, so yeah, it also comes down to, and most of the guys will say the same thing, it comes down to how creative the architectural designer is. The more creative you are, the more work you make, the higher the price is going to be. So you can take a raw product that's almost the cheapest in the granite range and you can almost double the price um, that you normally should charge. So it depends on the, the raw product as well, but a large portion of that is your lab and how creative you want to make the product or the, the final installation. Thanks. And Stefan, uh, scented surfacing does itself for the material is not necessarily that expensive, but it, it tends to uh, be more expensive in the long run because of the way it gets installed. Is that, is that right? Stefan, I think you're on mute. Sorry. So, yes, yeah, so the, the labor process, so the raw material might be very similar price, but uh, the process for the labor and installation tends to be a lot more. And that's the, the, the quote to the end user is obviously then more. Um, it's just the, the process, you know, when, when doing the manufacturing and installation. So, yes. It's that, that, that annoying substrate that you, all that, that additional timber product that you've got to pay for to support it. Um, yeah. Garth, just a quick question when it comes to the, the, the cost of, of um, working with any uh, natural or, or engineered stone or even sintered surfacing, that while you've got the product costs, um, your uh, designer can actually cut those costs for you as how they're designed so that you maximize slab usage. Um, how would they best do that? Um, yeah, correct, uh, Stephanie. The, the advantage we've got on a court surface compared to a natural stone is that um, it's a, because it's an engineered stone, it's made to a certain size. Um, and obviously, the, the manufacturers have, um, um, with time, realized what is the optimum size of a slab. Um, so when, we, when we're ordering a slab, we've got various different slab sizes that we can order from, from the suppliers. And um, depending on the job, we can minimum, minimize our wastage um, uh, because of the different options that we have on slab sizes. Um, the, you know, the courts, um, because it's become so popular, um, the, the cost of the material is, has reduced um, sub significantly in the last couple of years. Thanks. And then, yeah, we just need to think about the installation process. Um, 
Yeah, it's all very well you get this beautiful piece of material, but if it's not installed correctly, um, you, you can end up with a real dog's breakfast. Um, Jason, you've obviously said that, that laminate surfacing is really easy, DIY. So, I mean, that, there, there's really not, not a lot that can go wrong there yeah. unless you've got a dud installer. Well, yeah, the, the biggest thing to worry about is, is as I said, ex, uh, sealing the exposed edges. That's your, your risk. There's no, no fabrication, like we said, but really it's, it's um, when you make a, a sink cutout, when you just butting it up against the wall, it has to be sealed properly. Otherwise, that's where you're going to find the problems coming in later. And then uh, Brent, marble and granite, um, I know level cupboards, et cetera, that it always can be an issue. Yeah, Stefan can probably jump in more about that, but uh, the, the substructures is always the, or often the issue, um, just in terms of giving a, a product strength. Um, the other one which we sometimes struggle with is transporting large pieces into kitchens that need to go through the smallest door or smallest window or the tightest stairs, you end up carrying a three, 400 kilo piece of stone up a stairway. It's just a, often a struggle. Um, and then the last one is all about planning, planning, planning. Um, cutouts. Um, if we do an installation and the client doesn't have a sink or hob there and they just say, just install it, we'll do the cutout later. Um, the dust is not healthy such fine dust to create an absolute disaster in the kitchen to try clean it. Um, so that ends up being not blamed on us or whatever, it's just inconvenience to the client um, and us. And um, when we're looking at quartz surfacing, surfacing Garth, talking about, uh, Brent mentioned cutouts, um, there are some special rules in, in the installation um, process if you're going to do cutouts for hobs, etc., that need to be observed with quartz surfacing. Correct, um, Stephanie. Because the because the quartz is made in a uh, under pressure and heat, um, when when doing a cutout in a quartz surface, um, um, any sharp corner creates a weak stress point. And um, we found with time that um, if 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 a sharp corner is made on a quartz uh, surface, um, there's a possibility that it could crack out of that corner. So by drilling a, a, a by putting a radius in that corner. So for instance, when you're doing a, a cutout for a hob or a, a, a basin, um, instead of doing a sharp corner, we drill the corners with a core drill first, and then cut up to the up to the uh, the, the where the core drill has been done, uh, creating a radius in the corner, and, and that um, and that and that alleviates the problem of it cracking out of corners. Okay. And then with sintered surfacing, Stefan, um, this is the one that, that, that you have the most problems with on site if the kitchen company hasn't done their job properly, leveling yeah. out their carcassing and making sure that that substrate extra support is, is correctly done. And I know that uh, you, it, they've, it's very sensitive to if it's not installed stably and flat. Yes, so with sintered surfacing, yes, the, the substrate must be level, like must be level and it must be um, yeah, it must be level. Your, your your substrate must be level. Similarly to the quartz, we also have to do um, radiuses or the cutouts by the window sills, things like that. We also can't have those very square corners because that will also crack out of the out of the corner. Um, yeah, and you can't have very sharp edges. So we still also um, advise a two mil up, you know, on the edges so that yeah, again it's not too square. And then it doesn't doesn't crack or chip afterwards. So, and then Andrew with solid surfacing, from what I understand, it's a fairly simple process with the installing, other than the cumbersome movement of really big pieces of um, of material. Yeah, Steph, um, I won't totally agree. It's actually quite a lot of it's quite a lot of work on site. Um, to be honest, it's a, there's a lot of dust, there's a lot of noise, and and unfortunately. I'd, I'd make it aware to our customer right from the start, like Bent was mentioning. It's it's rather just be you know it's about planning and and sort of putting it out there before we get there because to alleviate our joy and we have to, we can't, we don't plonk it down. So I'll fabricate say three or four different uh, pieces in our factory as much as we can, um, but when getting on site, I have to join it because that's what the material does. So there's quite a lot of labor, there's quite a lot of work to be done on site, um, and. Uh, you know, to alleviate the joint as a process. So we've got to go through that. And unfortunately, it's, it's, it creates a bit of dust and noise. Um, but like the others, we also have our, 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 our techniques and to alleviate corner cracks. 
uh, with regards to hub and um, and things like that. Um, but the process of joining is important, and it's quite it's quite sp specialized. You can't join into the corner, for example, of an L shape. You got to the sheet is 760 wide, so take the join a little bit further, like an average 600 wide. It'll be around 100 in, so that your join isn't in the corner of an L shape, for example. Same as same as your corner of your hub, because that will cause cracking. But um, like Stefan was mentioning, we also need a substrate. Um, our material is 12 mil, but uh, if there's anything more than 700 uh, span with no support, we need a we need support. And what we actually do is just do uh, timber slats underneath so the material can breathe. We don't do a full board, um, and we just use whiteboard or we just use whiteboard, literally 16 mil or whatever thickness the material is. The trend at the moment is, is 12 mil, like the thickness of the material. And there, what we do is we just get the joiner um, kitchen cabinet maker to, to, uh, to just create their carcass so that our material can go straight onto their carcass and um, their slats underneath so that there's some support. Yeah. Thanks, Richard. Um, and then Karen maintenance, obviously a work surface needs to have longevity and, and uh, unfortunately not all consumers pay attention to the care and maintenance guidelines. Um, laminates, fairly simple. Yep, very easy to clean. Um, damp, well wrung out cloth is actually what we recommend. Um, mild detergents, so, so not slopping water all over, just wring the cloth out, wipe it down. Like I said, it's a sealed surface, so, so it's quite easy to clean it. Um, and a lot of people think that they need to put Mr. Min and Cobra and things on it. Not at all. There, no other polishes and things, just mild soap and, and a damp cloth is, is all you need. Um, yeah, that's the, the main, main things. Brent, with granite and marble, what would you recommend? You're on, you're on mute, Brent. Sorry, trying to avoid background noise. Um, <laughs> pretty similar to the laminate servicing, um, just mild detergent, no harsh chemicals to be used, um, and then just reseal every six months or a year. Um, with marble, avoid um, any harsh chemicals, especially marble because it will etch. Um, yeah. Okay, thanks. And, and Garth, what, what is slightly different in the care and maintenance of quartz to marble and granite? Um, like, like the others, any, any, any chemical, any household chemical will work. Um, there's a couple of um, things to look out for. Um, no product with any abrasive in it. So um, you, get some, you get some products that have got like a scouring um, a compound in it, which will obviously scratch the material because of the resin content. Um, and any product with, with, with any form of ammonia in it. Um, ammonia act, um, reacts with, with the resin and, and could stain the top. Um, you know, there's, there's, there's various products on the market, but the one that we all like to use is, is one called Chemico. Um, it's available at any, any, any um, uh, uh, outlets, uh, household cleaning equipment, uh, uh, material, and, and that, that's the one we, we normally recommend is Chemico. And uh, Stefan, uh, yours, your, your care and maintenance seems fairly simple, like, a bit like laminate surfacing. Is that right? Yes, so again, also no harsh and abrasive chemicals, and then you just clean it with with water and uh, mild detergent that you can get basically at home, so yeah. That, that's a nice simple one. Uh, and Andrew, uh, for yourself, for the solid surfacing? Um, well, simple enough, but uh, so also just um, soapy, soapy water and the material is totally non-porous um, and uh, so resistant to, to red wine and things like that. The material can be used in laboratories, so it's to that proof, but over time, it can, as, as I mentioned, can scratch. Um, and if it, when it gets to that, we would need to be called out and to actually sand uh, the scratching out. Uh, the basins that we create that are integrated, that is the same material uh, as a solid surface, material that's integrated into the solid surface top. That is obviously a little bit more hard wearing. There's a little bit more, obviously, dirt and grit and grime. And all I'd advise, worst case, you know, when it's over time, if it does start getting a little bit grubby, um, just to add a water sort of stroke jick, a tiny bit of jick with water, and you can 
you literally fill the basin up for, for 10 to 20 minutes, leave it in there for a little bit, empty it out, and then clean it with, uh, with, with the warm water. And that, uh, that helps. But where it gets to a point where it needs looking uh, at, and then we would be called in to, to repolish. Okay. Um, so we've, we've looked at all these, these wonderful topics and before anyone thinks we've forgotten old, good old fashioned timber, we haven't. Um, and we've asked our own Karen Bailey to just give us a rundown on what you need to know when it comes to having timber countertops as an option in your home. So uh, yeah, timber, thanks Steph. Uh, solid timber can give you um, a very unique spin or, or look on look to your kitchen, especially if it's quite a modern look and the timber can just soften the overall feel and bring warmth into the room. Um, sustainability wise, timber tops um, have got a greener footprint um, compared to um, mining for granite and stones and the most eco-friendly timber being um, your bamboo. I think it grows within five years, so it's quite sustainable. Um, Cost-wise, it varies, just like um, Brent was talking about your marble and granites, um, depending on the rarity, um, your price will be affected. And also how long it takes for, for that tree to, to grow, that it's, that it's mature enough to be filled. So you would need to go for a hard timber as well. Um, so you would look at the likes of your oaks, your beech, um, cherry, maple, walnut. Um, and stay away from, from your pine because those are just too soft and they'll they'll dent quite quite easily. The manufacture and installation needs to be undertaken by a professional who specializes in timber products. Um, they'll be equipped with the skills and the knowledge on how the, the natural movement of the timber works um, and to prevent any warping and, and bowing of those of those worktops. Uh, timber tops need very careful maintenance, depending on whether you have a butcher block top with your end grains or um, a, a face grain uh, worktop. Uh, face grain is more similar to thinking of like your dining room table tops. So butcher blocks, um, they would require regular sealing uh, with linseed oil to try and keep any of the, um, to make it a little bit more waterproof, um, to, to keep it nice and clean prevent, um, if you're using it as a, as a chopping board, prevent like your, your meat, blood and all that kind of thing from um, being absorbed. So regular sealing. Um, and it can actually your butcher block be, be sanded down um, a couple of mils and then um, like almost resurfaced and, and resealed again. Your face grain counters would be clear lacquered um, and very seldom do those get sanded down unless it's an emergency where there's a severe scratch in it that needs to be taken out. Um, but then obviously bear in mind that your thickness of your top will be, will be altered. And that would be across the board because your joints would all need to be leveled out. Um, Cons timber is not heat resistant, so hot pots, you will burn marks in there. Um, and unless you've got an end grain, I wouldn't suggest cutting on it because it's just going to scratch. Um, the most important thing with, with timber is, is water. Um, it's not water resistant, so any spillage um, or water sitting on the counter needs to be mopped up like very, very quickly. Um, otherwise, it's just going to seep in. And I think the main thing, and with all the all the finishes and, and, and worktops we've talked about, is your maintenance and, and, and care is required with all your finishes. And so as long as you are equipped with the information on what is required and you make an informed decision as to what you want, your worktops can, can last a long time. And, and quite often your timber tops can work uh, last, sorry, just as long as your stone tops, provided they're looked after after properly. So the main thing I think from this is, is your, your education on the different finishes that are available and making an informed decision with regards to what you choose and how long you want it to last and um, what setting you want to use it in. Thanks. Thanks, Karen. Um, so yeah, just in conclusion, I think the important thing we've learned here is making sure your choice of material is informed um, and, and that you, you obtain your raw materials from a reputable source. So whether it's a, a laminate product, uh, a natural stone, an engineered stone, um, or a solid surfacing, make sure that it comes from a company with a good guarantee, a good reputation, because you do get a lot of cheap imports coming into South Africa which don't necessarily have the quality and guarantees in place um, that one would require for longevity. 
Um, and then on top of that, for anything other than your DIY laminate surfacing, which Jason tells us is so, so easy to, to work with, make sure that your fabricator and installers are qualified, that they know how to work with the material, that they know what they're doing, that they've got the right machinery to work with it uh, and to, to, to install it correctly. Um, and then just maintaining, follow the, um, the manufacturers or the suppliers care and maintenance guidelines. I think a lot of people overlook reading through those thoroughly and then want to know sort of three, four years down the line, oh, why isn't my surfacing not looking the way it should? And uh, I had it the other day, I had a friend who had uh, um, a, a piece of uh, quartz surfacing who left red wine on it and decided to try and clean it off with Handy Andy. So one of the big no-nos using ammonia. So she got a good scolding. But yeah, just making sure you follow those guidelines to keep it uh, looking good for, for its full lifespan. But guys, yes, thank you so much for your time. I think it's been really informative. Um, and um, I'm sure that the, the students that are watching this have, have learned a hell of a lot. So thank you all very much for your time. And um, we will chat to you soon, I'm sure, on other subjects. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you very much. much.